So is this approach the endo or the exo approach? Aren't they drawn the same? These two pictures? Yeah. These two? Yeah. Well, notice that in this case, this carbon is pointing straight to the left, whereas uh -huh. here it's pointing uh -huh. straight down. Uh -huh. So does this represent the endo or the exo position? Endo. In this position, we have this carbon. So remember, these are the two dotted atoms. What, what atom does this represent? Carbon. This is the carbonyl carbon. This is the carbonyl carbon that's connected to the dotted atom. And then what does this represent? Well, I've actually labeled this represents the oxygen. This is the orbital for the oxygen. Notice in this case, the carbonyl carbon is pointing straight towards the back of the dying dying. So this would be the endo attack. But notice that in this case, it's not pointing straight to the back. So this would be closer to an exo attack. It's, uh, maybe it's not pointing directly away from the back, but it's certainly not pointing into the back like in this picture. Well, should you draw it pointing away from the back? Uh, I can't see any way to um, really do that with this particular picture to make it come out in the normal zigzag approach, or could I? Uh, let's see. Yeah, if you just make the carbon actually go to the right instead of down. Well, no, I don't think so, because after all, Over here we have a hydrogen. Um, I don't. I think this is about the best picture that we can do um, over here. Given that this line looks like this, and we're going to have a zigzag approach, I think this is the most accurate picture that we can get. Um, so I think this is the best that we can do. Anyway, we'll, we'll see how this works out. This is called exo because it's certainly not pointing in towards the back. Certainly not as pronouncedly as this one over here. All right, now we have to put in our shading. So what shading should I put over here? Shaded or unshaded? Unshaded. Unshaded to match up with this. I remember I want to have bonding interactions. All right, but now I don't have any choice. What should this look like? Well, now I have to follow this pattern over here. I have to follow this pattern. Um, so if I'm going to follow this pattern, maybe it would have been better if I had drawn a different model over here. Uh, but anyway, I need to put um, uh, a node in the next interaction. So here I can have a node in the next interaction. And then I need to have a bonding interaction. And then I need to have a node. As it turns out, maybe it would have been better to draw the LUMO. We really ended up using the LUMO that looks more like this. So maybe that would have been a better model. Remember, these are really equivalent to each other because they both have two vertical nodes. So that would give us this picture here. And then we can do the same thing over here. So again, this should be unshaded. Two nodes, one, two. Okay. Now, how many bonding interactions are there in this endo picture between the two molecules? How many bonding interactions are there between the two molecules? Well, here's a bonding interaction. These are lined up. Here's a bonding interaction. And is this bonding or anti-bonding? So here's a third bonding interaction. We didn't get that in the previous example, but that's because we didn't have any substituents. Remember, we can use dots to show the bonding interactions. Now, this oxygen over here is too far away to have any interactions. It's just, remember, you can't have an interaction unless things are close enough to overlap. So there's not going to be any interaction between this oxygen and the diene because it's just too far away. You can even kind of see that in the picture over here. But that gives us our three interactions. Now let's count how many interactions there are over here. Two. One, two. Now why is there no bonding interaction here even though we have shaded next to shaded? Because they're just too far away. These are now just too far away. That's the whole point of the exo approach. In the exo approach, this is not pointing towards the back of the diene. So it's not in a good position for overlap. So I'm not going to put any dots between these two. You can even see from the picture that they're not in a good position to overlap, certainly not in a good position like this. So here we get the two interactions. So who is more favored, endo or exo? Mm -hmm. All right, that's what all the work that we've been doing is to accomplish. All the work that we've been doing on molecular orbitals is for this one explanation. Um, this is the explanation for why the endo approach is usually favored over the exo approach. This is the molecular orbital explanation 
for why the transition state for an endo approach is more favored than the transition state for an exo approach, because it has this one extra bonding interaction. So we have to do a lot of work. We had to do a lot of work just to understand the molecular orbital pictures just to get to this. Uh, of course, none of this would work unless we use the HOMO from the diene and the LUMO from the dienophile over here. Um, although, actually, I, I've heard that actually you could flip these. You could use the LUMO from here and the HOMO from here, and you would still get the right answer. Uh, but anyway, it's more conventional to do it this way. Um, so we did it the conventional way. Where we used, uh, the key thing is you have to use different layers from the two of them. So uh, we did that. One thing that you want to do is you want to go back and do this again. And most time, a lot of times people just don't get pictures that look as good as these because they don't use the kind of slanty lines in the right place. People try to draw things too vertically. They just try to draw the diene like this and the dienophile like this. So try to use slanting lines like I did if you have to actually use one of these explanations uh, on the test. And I find it's still helpful to put in the asterisks and the dots to show the atoms that are directly related and the deals all there. All right. Is there anything else we have to talk about there? That about wraps it up. Remember again that this atom is just too far away to have any interactions in either picture. The issue is whether this atom will be in the right position or not. And in this picture it was and this picture it wasn't. And this pure orbital over here, again, never really had any interaction. It was too far away from everybody. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.